Hey, and welcome to My Own Devices Audio Channel. Today I'm presenting a story that I believe will be of particular interest to owners of MagnaPan loudspeakers, but I also believe it will appeal to other enthusiasts because it's pretty interesting. Amazingly, there are lots of magnet pans from the 70s, 80s, 90s, and 2000s still in use around the world. And I suppose it's because they look and sound unlike any other loudspeaker, and they are also an amazing value compared to more traditional box speaker designs. Until a few years ago, I hadn't actually heard them. Of course, I've been familiar with them for decades, but I just never had the opportunity to even be in the same room with a pair that were hooked up. And they've been on my wish list of speakers to check out for a long time. I even almost bought a pair three years ago and I made a video about the experience. And I was looking out for a set that weren't too old and in decent condition. In 2021, I spotted some 1.6 QR models locally and they fit my criteria. They're from the early 2000s and they were well cared for and affordable. I remember getting them home and I was really excited. I couldn't wait to set them up in my room. But my excitement was matched by the look of my wife's horror when she saw them for the first time. Those tall black monstrosities were the opposite of what she considered acceptable for home use. Thankfully, I have a dedicated listening room where I can do pretty much as I wish. I had read everywhere that Maggie's require lots of power and current to perform at their best. So I initially powered them using an NAD and then an Acoustat amp. But then I found a Bryston 4BST. And my listening room is not large, not huge. It's a home office. And it did take a little bit of effort to get the room properly set up. But with the Bryson and a Air Acoustics preamp, the Maggie's were a revelation. The scale, the soundstage, the detail was incredible to my ears. And to me, no other speaker I'd ever owned had sounded as engaging as the Magnaplaners. And I was a pretty happy camper until one day I was streaming a track by Erica Badu with some really deep synthesized bass, much deeper than you usually get from a vinyl record. And then I heard it, a buzzing, a terrible rattle coming from my wonderful speakers. Oh no, it was the dreaded delamination that I'd heard about. That's when the wire coils on the front of the Mylar diaphragm start to become detached. It's a very common issue that's entirely due to the age of the speaker, not necessarily abuse or neglect. And some have suggested the glue and the methods that MagnaPan were employing during manufacture was flawed and they have to eventually, they're eventually going to fail. The low notes of the music cause the loosened wire coils to resonate at certain low frequencies. What was my solution? Not playing super deep bass tracks loudly. And that's what I did for over a year. Every now and then the buzzing would reemerge, but I mostly kept it at bay by avoiding music tracks with low, super low bass notes at, at higher volumes. But I knew eventually I would need to deal with the issue. So let's say you have an aging pair of Maggie's that are damaged, blown, or buzzing from delamination. What are, what are your options? Well, you could buy some new ones or repair your old set. If you're really attached to your old ones and are somewhat handy, MagnaPan provides help to intrepid DIYers. They'll, they will sell you the repair kit with instructions at a very reasonable price. I looked into repairing them myself. I saw photos, read articles, and watched videos of individuals doing the restoration. I even bought some acetone and some new glue. It's a rather labor-intensive and tedious procedure. But I eventually reached the conclusion that it's not something that I am inclined to do. Hey, I do enjoy some hi-fi DIY servicing and repairs. You've likely seen my previous videos, but this job had zero appeal to me. 
So then I was seriously pondering just selling them as they are and buying some, a brand new pair. The small LRS pluses are receiving tons of positive reviews and for only around $1,000, they were a definite possibility. I also looked at the larger 0.7s that are the next step up and I've actually heard them a few times at audio shows. And then the larger 1.7Is are the modern equivalent models to my 1.6s and they sell for $3,000. You may not know this, but Magnapan provides a repair restoration service for older models at their factory in White Bear Lake, Minnesota. To get started, you can simply visit the Magnapan website and fill out the online service request form and receive an estimate on the cost of repair. So that's what I did. I filled one out and I got a response pretty quickly from the service manager, Mick Booker. And the estimate was $1,500 to $2,200, depending on the condition. And that price would be for a straightforward strip and rewire, where they would remove the old deteriorating adhesive along with the wires and replace them with brand new wires and the latest adhesive that maintains its integrity for much longer. Honestly, I was a bit surprised by the fairly wide $700 difference in price, but I suppose it's difficult to give an accurate estimate before seeing them in person. And I'm sure they've encountered some pretty nasty looking examples over the years. So for between $1,500 and $2,200, I could get my 1.6s to be just like new again. Then I started thinking, this could make an interesting video. I could document the experience of sending my Maggies back to the factory and getting them refurbished. And I wondered, would the people at Magnapan be interested in partnering with me and making this a video? It could be an interesting topic for the owners of older Magnapan speakers to see the process and how it's done and the results. I replied to Mick and proposed the idea of working together on a video and with some accommodation on the cost. And to my delight, Mick was actually very enthusiastic about this idea. He, he said they don't normally offer discounts, but he had something a bit different and fun in mind. He said that they traditionally only refurbish speakers back to their original spec. But recently they've been thinking outside the box and doing custom work with crossovers and other components. He said that if I'm interested, I can send them my 1.6s pay for the strip and rewire job, and he and his colleague Bill would design and perform special upgrades for the, to the speakers at no charge. And they would also document the process with photographs and a detailed description. Now, Mick's idea did take this video into a bit of a new direction. And I pondered the proposal for a few minutes and agreed to proceed. Firstly, I needed a box to ship them safely from Florida to Minnesota. Magnapan can provide a box, packing materials and instructions for $60, including shipping. And it arrived a week later inside a big plastic bag. And I recommend following the instructions carefully and using plenty of strong tape. The box is very long and weighed 80 pounds, and UPS charged me $180 to ship it back to the factory in Minnesota. Later that week, I got a note, notice that it arrived at its destination. Mick had previously informed me that it would take something like four to six weeks to finish the job. But then to my surprise, a couple of weeks later, he called to inform me that they were ready. While Mick was at Expona in Chicago, Bill, the service guy, got on with it and completed the job. They shipped the speakers back to me via UPS with a new box and packing materials. And I was delighted to find them propped up against the wall on my front porch when I got home from work. And I was like a little kid. I had to get them unboxed and hooked up as quickly as possible. And inside the box was a nicely written letter from Mick with a detailed account of what they did with my 1.6s. Also included was a USB thumb drive with photos that I will be sharing with you here. 
He started out by saying that they had a blast working on them and they were thrilled with how they turned out. He informed me that initially they believed the issue was the usual delamination, but upon further examination there was some undesirable stretching of the mylar and there was a small tear which could result in unwanted distortion. He wrote that they happened to have a spare set of reclaimed, unused 1.7i drivers at the factory and they, they fit perfectly, so they installed those rather than fix the old ones. That's very cool because 1.6s are two-way design and the 1.7i's are actually a three-way. And the 1.7i's don't employ wires like the older models, but rather thin foil, which has lower mass and much less likely to come loose again. Next, they tackled the crossovers. The original iron core inductors were replaced with air core units to get a smoother overall frequency response. An equivalent value air core inductor would be physically much larger than the iron core that they removed and would not fit in the crossover space. So Bill custom wound two small coils that equaled the value of a single one, which did fit. They also replaced the old capacitors with new copper-rich polycaps. Mick said that he made a similar mod to his personal .7s and is incredibly happy with the results. Up next were the speaker terminal connectors. The old nickel ones were removed and replaced with gold-plated connectors for improved electrical conduction and a nicer appearance. Then the braided wires were replaced with solid core copper. Lastly, I had already chosen gray fabric rather than black covers that they had previously. They also added nice dark cherry wood trim or styles on the sides. So there's not much left of the original 1.6s now. Just the MDF frame and, a, and the feet. Everything else is now new and upgraded. They're hot rodded and pimped out as people like to say. And unlike current 1.7i's, they can be bi-wired or bi-amped. Now you're asking, how do they sound? Well, I'd listened to them for many hours using the 400 watt per channel Bryston and a 500 watt per channel Orchard Audio Star Crimson Ultra 2.0 Class D amp, and I'm really impressed. My initial impressions were, wow, there's a lot more bass now. No, not the 20 hertz type, but, but I can hear and feel much more bass than I previously could. I always thought the 1.6s were a little bass shy overall, and I partnered them with a subwoofer. I listened to my new updated ones for, for a few days without a subwoofer, and I believe I could live with them just fine. The bass was more than adequate for my taste. And I just purchased a new REL sub from House of Stereo. I noticed that the sound was also less laid back than before, more direct and upfront. The instruments and voices were more finely detailed and, and pronounced and clear. First impressions were overall very positive. To my ears, there was an improvement all around and the buzzing was gone, <laughs> of course. So one of the first tracks I put on was the Erica Badu track, and it was great. However, after a while, I thought I could detect a little congestion in the mid-band, and I thought perhaps they needed a bit more break-in time, which they probably did. Then I decided to go kind of crazy, and I disconnected the Bryston amp and connected my Carry Audio tube amplifier that's rated at a blistering 35 to 40 watts per channel in ultra linear mode and about half that power in triode mode. And I was a little nervous at first. Would the Maggie's cause the four KT88 tubes to melt down or explode? No, nope, they survived, but I was a bit nervous so I didn't turn it up very loud. I switched back to the Bryson for a day or so and then I was thinking and I decided to remove the KT88 tubes from the carry amp and replaced them with EL34s. With the carry amp reconnected and warmed up, I started to turn up the volume louder and louder. And there were no explosions or smoke or horrible distortion. It was glorious. Maggie's love tubes, or these Maggie's love EL34 tubes. Gone was any hint of mid-range issues at all. It was, I was in sonic heaven. 
I stayed up till 2 a.m. listening to record after record, track after track, and then I switched to the lower power mode, triode mode, and they were even better. How can that be? And there's plenty of volume in my modestly sized room, getting up to 90 plus decibels, and I can't detect clipping or distortion at all. It, I even asked my friend Ross to come over and take have a listen, and he concurred that it's a pretty impressive setup. You know, speakers are a passive window into your system. From my experience, magnet pans are a cleaner window into hearing what's going up, going on further up your chain of components. I must say that these are the finest sounding loudspeakers that I've ever owned. And my system, as it's currently configured, is the best it has ever sounded. As the weeks have passed since they arrived, I've become even more enamored with their performance. Now, Mick told me that since the beginning, MagnaPan's service policy has always been to repair all speakers back to their original spec. No mods or upgrades allowed. If a mod was found in a unit in for service, they would remove and replace it with stock parts. But since Mick became the service manager in 2021, that policy has changed. He's actually very enthusiastic about upgrades and modifications. Anything that can improve upon the performance of their speakers, he's all for it. He is familiar with the upgrade kits that are available from companies such as GR Research, and he approves wholeheartedly. Just like most all consumer goods, Maggie's are built to a price point. So there has to be trade-offs when choosing the internal parts. Over the decades, MagnaPan has maintained a tenet of remaining a high-value brand. Now, they could build them with exotic composite materials, carbon fiber, machined aluminum, and fancy capacitors, but then the prices would shoot way up and they would lose their tremendous value proposition. Mick told me that if a customer sends in their speakers with their own upgrade kit, they'll be happy to install it for you, as long as the values of the parts are correct. He said they're very open-minded about unique mods and that the customers may be looking for. If you own an older pair of MagnaPan speakers that you're fond of, but have issues, or if you have a fairly current model, or even if you just bought a brand new set and are interested in component upgrades, the service department can hook you up. If you're not sure what you want, they will make appropriate suggestions. This is not your dad's MagnaPan anymore. I mean, what other well-established speaker or audio gear brand is doing anything similar to this? So when you fill out the online form, make sure to tick the box that says, I am potentially interested in upgrades and improvements for these speakers. That should get the process started. Now, I did receive a nice discount for some of the labor and upgrade components, but the total still cost me around $2,000, and about a quarter of that going towards UPS shipping fees. Ouch! The further you live from Minnesota, the more the shipping will cost. My dilemma now is, what do I call them? They still have the 1.6 QR nameplates, but are no longer 1.6s at all. They aren't stock 1.7Is either. They're actually a bit better, a cool hybrid. I asked Mick, and he suggested MG 1.6X. Okay, so that's what I'll call them. The 1.6X, or 1.6Xs. Was it worth it? You know, it was for sure. Firstly, I learned a bit more how MagnaPan speakers are designed and built. Secondly, I learned that they are a forward-thinking company with some new blood that want to boldly take the company in new and exciting directions. And thirdly, I've got a fantastic pair of loudspeakers that I will be holding on to for the, for the foreseeable future. I'm in good shape speaker-wise.
for now. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already. I appreciate my videos receiving likes and check out my Patreon where you can support my channel and watch new videos early and ad free. So it's goodbye from me and don't forget to enjoy your own devices. Bye.